What is wild space? Describe to me kind of like the space in between the worlds, because yeah. this has changed a bit as well from previous lore. But you talk a lot about the fun in between. Mm -hmm. uh, what, how yes. does it function? For those that don't know what Spelljammer is. Of course. So um, when you are on a world and you look up at the night sky, what you are looking at is basically wild space. And if you can figure out some way to get from there to up there, um, then you can experience that setting. And the way you usually do that, of course, is you hop on a ship that is space worthy and you head off into there. As soon as you leave your world, you are now in wild space. And you can go across wild space to other worlds in the same system as the worlds that you were in. Or if you go far enough, you can actually come to the edge of what's called a wild space system. And it starts to get a little hazy and silvery. And uh, there's sort of a, a mystical uh, silvery void that begins to surround you. And distant stars shine through that void, sort of beckoning you. And if you sort of cross that veil into that silver void, you have just moved from wild space into what we call the astral sea. And these two things together are part and parcel of what most D&D players call the astral plane. And so astral, of course, means of the stars. And so when you are in the astral plane, you are among the stars. And that's kind of the thing we're going for here. One of the challenges was we didn't want to make our wild space as well, frankly, as dull and empty as like the space between Earth and Mars, say. And so um, much of this, much of our efforts went into defining wild space not as a sort of uh, a dark void, but as a living, breathing ocean uh, full of color and wonder. And the art's great because not only are we illustrating creatures and characters, but we're showing wild space itself and the astral sea, trying to give DMs a feel for what this setting is like. And it's so critically important in a setting-centric book to show the environment in which the adventures take place. And so there are so many illustrations of wild space, of astral sea, of ships in that space. You know what I mean? And you get a sense of how full space is. This yes, doesn't, that's the other this important This is not thing. outer space. This feels no. like the brightest parts of any nebula you've seen. Yes. Uh, the color palette was very deliberately chosen. Wild space is, is rainbowic. It's kaleidoscopic. It's full of life like a teeming ocean. It's got creatures, schools of space fish and space jellyfish and blah, 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 blah. You know, it's... it's it's, and, and then dead gods is floating by. Then once you get into the astral sea, yeah. things start to get more surreal and cerebral. Right. You start to see dead gods and giant crystal monoliths and um, the bizarre starts to take shape because the astral plane, once you get into the astral sea, part of the astral plane, it is more of a realm of thought and concept. Uh, you don't, for instance, in the astral sea, uh, need uh, to breathe. Right. You don't need to eat, you don't need to drink, you just sort of exist in perpetual stasis, but living there like, like Gif Yankee do it all the time, of course. And so it is a very, very bizarre place, but it has its own palette, sort of this silvery, purplish, pinkish, misty fog that you're constantly drifting through. Um, the way I like to think about it, um, it's like in Star Trek the Wrath II, The Wrath of Khan, going into the Mutara Nebula. That's what... That's what our space is like. Right. That's perfect. If you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.